in the last video, what we did was we tried to revolve, or we did revolve, the, um, the area bound by these two functions about the y-axis, okay? This time, let's revolve it around the axis x equals four, all right? We know that for this one, y equals four, that's gonna be the disk method, all right? Um, and in the final video in this series, I'm gonna show you an example of how to revolve the, um, the uh, volume by both using the disk and washer method as well as the shell method. But since we've done this already in the previous, let's not worry about this one. But in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have our, vol our area, all right? And if you remember, our area looks something like this, all right? So um, I apologize if it doesn't look as good as it should, but um, so here's our area that we're binding. Remember the top function was y equals the cube root of x and the lower function was going to be y equals square root of x. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and set this up. Now remember the height for each of these was the cube root of x minus square root of x. But now we're going to revolve it around this line, x equals 4. And so the distance is not going to be x, right? But the distance is going to be four minus x, okay, where the radius is going to be. So the radius for this is going to be four minus x, right? So anytime you're revolving about a different axis other than um, the y-axis and it's a vertical axis, you just take that axis and subtract from x as long as, um, as, long as this axis is to the right of the y-axis. Now, if it's the left, then it would be x minus whatever that axis is. So to set this up, we already know the limits of integration. Remember, we found those in the previous video. This is the point one, one. And so our volume in this case is going to be two pi the integral, zero to one. Instead of x, it's going to be four minus x. Okay, so that's how we take care of that other axis. And then we still have cube root of x minus square root of x and then dx. All right. Now, this is going to be a little bit messier algebraically than we did in the previous, but it won't be too bad, right? So just going down here, so we have some room, um, 2 pi, 0 to 1, 4 minus x, and then x to the 1 third minus x to the 1 half dx. We're going to FOIL, all right? So we're going to get 2 pi integral 0 to 1. And if we FOIL it out, 4 times 1 third, 4 times a half, or 4x to the one third, and then minus 4x to the one half, and then distributing negative x to both of those, that's going to be negative x to the four thirds, since that's x to the first, and we just add the one and the one third, plus x to the three halves, dx. All right, so lots of fractions in here, all right? Fortunately, we do have um, some denominators that look about the same, but towards the end, we're going to notice that that's not going to help us too much. All right, so 2 pi quantity 4x to the, or I'm sorry, 4x to the 4 thirds over 4 thirds. So we're integrating. Okay. Minus 4x to the 3 halves over 3 halves. Minus x to the 7 thirds over 7 thirds, and then plus x to the 5 halves over 5 halves from 0 to 1. All right, so we're going to clean this up a little bit, um, and then substituting 1 back in is going to help, and substituting 0 back in is going to help even more. All right, so um, 4 divided by 4 thirds is just going to turn into 3. All right, so this is going to be 2 pi three times one to the four thirds. All right, so just cleaning this guy up. Um, and then we get minus eight thirds of one to the one uh, to the three halves power. Okay, so right here, that's our three halves power. So we got that one minus seven or three sevenths of one to the seven thirds. Okay, so this will be three sevenths times one to the seven thirds. And then finally, plus two fifths times one to the five halves. 
Now, technically, there's a minus zero in there. All right, so ultimately, what does this turn into? So two pi, three minus eight thirds, minus three sevenths, and then plus two fifths. All right, so I'm just gonna use computer algebra system. I certainly could get a common denominator here, probably like 105 or something like that, but um, probably easier just to use from alpha. So let's go ahead and do it. So here we go, wolf from alpha, not wolf. All right. And we had three plus, forgot already, um, minus eight thirds, minus three sevenths. And then plus two fifths. All right, so that's 32, 105, all right. Um, we still have the two though, so that's gonna be two pi times 32 over 105. And so it looks like we're gonna end up with 64 pi over 105. All right, um, and certainly what we probably should do is we should probably just plug this into Wolfram Alpha to see if we get the same thing, all right, just to verify. So I'm gonna do that just because this is, there's a lot of algebra going on, a lot of room for error. All right, so we go back, we are going to integrate, it was four minus X times X to the one third minus X to the one half or square root of X. And that went from zero to one. All right, so um, we're hoping for 64 pi over 105. Um, oh, and I forgot the two pi out front. There we go. All right, and so it looks like we got the right answer for this, so 64 pi over 105. Um, again, be careful, if it gives you an image, just recognize that it doesn't necessarily give you um, the image of the volume of revolution, it'll just give you the image of this integral. Okay, so be careful of that. All right, okay. So um, one last example, and I'm gonna show this to you guys in another video, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the disk and washer method as well as the shell method to be able to find the same volume. So I'll show you how to try to use them interchangeably um, and that you can do it. It's just that one is gonna be easier than the other. So we'll finish this off in our final video. Um, in this section. And we're not going to flip this around, we'll put it the right way.